All right, so this lesson is discussing, we're talking about functions and how they shift, and we've talked about horizontal shifts and vertical shifts, and again, being able to recognize what kind of function is which. So if I wrote down f of x equals x to the third power, you would recognize, oh, I know that is a cubic function, okay? And I know it looks something like this. And the snakes here, the critical point at zero, 0, looks like that, okay? Now, of course, we've already talked about if I were to change this and maybe I've made it x minus 1 cubed plus 3, okay, we know that that would move the critical point to the right one up 3, okay? But this lesson, we're going to be talking about what the, a negative does to the problem, okay? So if I were to make this a negative x cubed problem, Okay, all it does, here's the kind of the definition of it, it makes a reflection over the y-axis, no, excuse me, the x-axis. It's a reflection over the x-axis, okay? So if I were to make a reflection over the x-axis, okay, that would mean this part right here, that part down there towards the bottom, actually moves up here like this, okay? And that would mean this part right here in the first quadrant actually comes down like this, okay? So that would be a reflection over the x-axis, right? If I were to kind of turn the graph on the x-axis, that's what it would look like, the equation in blue, okay? So whenever there's a negative in front of the function, it just means it reflects, Okay, so let me show you another example here. Okay, let me show you another example. So let's say I had this. f of x equals x plus 2 squared minus 1. Okay, and then, of course, so let's add a negative to the front. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is that I have to recognize, okay, this is a quadratic function. So it's a quadratic function. If I were to draw a rough sketch, again, the critical point is 0, 0, and both ends going up like this. Okay? And then I recognize that there's a shift involved. Okay? But before I recognize the shift, I'm going to take care of the negative in front. So I'm going to flip this graph over the x-axis because it's negative, okay? So really, my new graph is going to be facing downwards like this. And of course it's facing downwards because we know that anything in front of the parentheses is A, and for a quadratic function, if A is negative, that means the graph faces down, okay? So now I'm looking at my purple function, and now I follow the changes. So the there is a, it's going to, if the change is with x, that's going to be a horizontal shift, which means I go to the left 2, and then the minus 1 means I go down 1. So I go to left 2, so 1, 2, and down 1. So my new function is going to be here on my orange graph. Okay? Okay. So the negative in front, so once you graph the parent function, then recognize that there's a negative, you need to flip the whole graph over, and then from there, apply the shift as necessary. Okay? So let's do another example here. And in order to do that, we'll like to take a look at this graph. Okay? Actually, before we do that, let's do one more example together. All right, so let's give you the function g of x equals negative the cube root of x plus 1 plus 3. Okay? So negative the cube root x plus 1 plus 3. First thing I need to recognize is that it's a cube root function. Okay? So my cube root function looks something like this. Again, I know it's going to be here, and it's going to look like a snake, but it's going to kind of go left to right like this. Okay? But I also recognize that I have a negative in front, okay? And the negative makes everything reflect over the x-axis. 
So my new graph, so this part here, is actually going to do this, okay? And this part here is going to reflect and actually do this. So the red graph is my new cube root function because of the negative. It reflected everything over the x-axis, okay? Now I apply the shift that it says here. So I see that there's a plus 1 with the x, so that means I go to the left 1. And I see a plus 3 on the outside, so that means I move up 3. So to the left 1, up 3, means I'll be right here. But again, I start up here, come down, and it kind of snakes down like that. So again, I don't need an exact graph, I just need a rough sketch. Okay? So the negative, all it does is that it reflects the graph over the x-axis. Okay? So now let's take a look at all these graphs here, numbers 1 through 6, and we'll see if we can determine what kind of functions they are, and if there's reflections involved, and where the new graph would be. Okay, so number one, taking a look at this picture, this is going to be a cubic function. Okay, so I know it's going to look something like this, f of x equals x cubed, right? Because that's a cubic function. Okay, and again, normal cubic functions, if you look at those notes we took last week, it goes from down to up, right? So this is a normal cubic function, so there's no negative involved, so I leave it just like that. But normally, a normal cubic function starts at 0, 0, correct? So this graph looks like it moves to the left 1, so left 1, and down 4. So left 1, down 4. Okay? So my original parent function has to have the new changes in it. So f of x equals x might, let's see, actually plus 1. So x plus 1 cubed, and then down 4 means minus 4. Okay, so number two, if we take a look at number two, okay, I notice that, okay, it's a quadratic, because I recognize it's a parabola, okay, so it's quadratic, and my normal function would look like f of x equals x squared, okay, but here's, how, here's what I noticed, you see how the graph is going down this time, so that means there is a negative involved, okay, so I know my new equation is going to be something like f of x equals negative, okay, negative x something, and I notice that my vertex has moved from 0, 0, it looks like it moved 1, 2, 3, 4 up, so up 4, and it also went to the left 3, so left 3. So the left right is a horizontal shift, meaning it's going to be left 3, so that's going to be plus 3 squared, and up 4 means I put a plus 4 there. Okay, so it's just really important to recognize that the graph is facing downwards, so that means it's going to be, uh, you're going to put a reflection or a negative in front of the equation. Okay, number three, uh, I recognize that this looks like a square root function. So a square root function, okay, which normally means it looks like this. All right, and I notice that it's going from down to up, that's a good indicator that from down to up, it's positive, meaning I don't need to put a negative in this one. Okay. But I do recognize that my origin or my center or critical point has shifted. So I go to the right, one, two, three. So right, three. And I go down, one, two. So down, two. Which means my square root function now becomes f of x equals the square root of x minus three plus 2. Okay, number 4. Taking a look here, again, it looks like it starts up and actually starts going downwards, right? So it starts high and then goes low. So, but I recognize that this looks like a cube root function. Okay, which a cube root function, if I were to write it out, looks something like this. But I have to recognize that usually for a cube root function, it doesn't start down and then go up left to right, like something like this. But this graph does the opposite. So that means we have to put a negative in front. Okay. But then my usual center is at 0, 0. For this graph, I go to the right 2. So right 2. And I go up 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so my new function... 
is going to be f of x equals negative cube root of x minus 2 plus 4. Because I do the opposite, because if it's right, we usually think positive, but we do the opposite of what's inside of x with negative, and then we go up 4. Okay? And the last one, we'll try number 6 here. Okay? So number 6, you might recognize that hopefully you see this is an exponential function. Okay? And a normal exponential function, again, the one that we know for our parent graph is just 2 to the x power. Okay? But you'll notice that it starts high and actually goes low. Okay? So it starts high and actually goes low. So that means it is going to be negative. So f of x to the negative 2x. Okay? And then... I notice that usually, remember for my critical point for an exponential is at 0, 1. So this one went to the left 1. 